to plan Vicky's 50th birthday party. She wants a knife for her birthday. Should I be worried? She wants a knife? She wants a chef's knife. <laughs> Can I get a glove with that too? <laughs> I want my own chef knife. I'm tired of using yours. I'm like, okay. Uh, so maybe I'll just give her mine since it looks nice and wrap it up for her and I'll get myself something new. Well, we're, we're doing a surprise party. Family's coming into town. They surprised her. Actually, they're here now. But my other, my sister is going to be coming in this weekend, so that'll be another surprise. Um, and I told her that's the best I could do is just give her the surprise of my family coming in. But um, she's going to be really surprised when we have a little party and all her friends and some of the coworkers show up and uh, people we haven't seen in a while. Huh? I honestly did not know that you couldn't get New York pizza in Chicago. I didn't know you couldn't get it. I thought you could get it everywhere. Every day is prep, 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 prep. So it's fresh. From the beginning, it was a lot of hours. We had no clue what we were doing in this business. We both looked at each other and said, how are we going to open a pizzeria with no money? We're a family-owned business. Our faith is very strong, and I absolutely believe that um, God clearly opened every door for us to open this restaurant. Our, our children work in here. Everybody taking pride in what they're doing. Everything we did in here, we did ourselves. The landlord had repossessed the equipment, so he was just looking to rid of the equipment at a reasonable price, which of course we didn't have the money for, but he was willing to put it on a payment plan. You know, we would write a check for the food bill because we knew it wouldn't come out until Monday. We would write a check and that we could do back then. Yeah, and then we knew that the weekend would pay for the check by Monday. And in the beginning, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, now we need more help. Each one of the family members is so strong on their beliefs and their value of making this restaurant succeed. They rode that roller coaster for five years before, um, and nobody wanted to go down that road again. If you know a new career, a fresh start with that East Coast pizza recipe that my brother and my nephew had. Well, we've been well received, and we have a big following, and uh, totally blessed. Making the food is one thing, but you know, getting to know your customers um, and, and learning who they are and what they like. We had a customer the other day, can you make that cl white clam pizza? Yeah, we can. Whatever you're looking for, we'll recreate it for you the best that we can. I mean, we've watched, you know, every food show going because we're foodies uh, to say, hey, let's try this dish, let's try that. And it's the stuff that we like that we're sharing with everybody and they like it. My first memory of pizza had to be in Beacon, New York, John's Pizzeria. Uh, John's, would my mom would take me there and it was just a little pizzeria. I don't think it was more than 500 square feet, if that. I remember walking up the front steps, uh, going in the door, the counter was there. The pizza oven was behind him. John himself was the guy making all and doing all the work. I don't remember ever seeing anybody else. Um, and then that slice, that reheated slice of cheese was just amazing. We probably had in the town where I grew up probably three pizzerias that I could remember in the city of Beacon. And uh, Turco's was the next town over. That was in somebody's house. There was an apartment upstairs uh, or in the back of it. I can't remember all of it, but uh, that was their house. That's how they started. 
So you'd walk in, and around the corner was the pizza oven and the prep station. You walked into the counter, and that was it. They, I mean, it was no bigger than, geez, I don't think, 8 by 20, the whole area, maybe, maybe 10 by 20. And they made, they had a little oven and made it, and their pizza would be thin as can be. If I could recreate that pizza, that was a, a, a great pizza. We still, everybody still talks about Turco's pizza. Every day somebody comes in new, whether they've been waiting a year, two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 36 years, doesn't matter. I mean, that's, that's what happens. And, and you see that smile on their face and they finally get to it because we were here for five years asking the same question. Where can you find your pizza? If you would ask me 10 years ago if I would I be doing today, not a million years or for a million dollars would I have guessed pizza. Eating, yes. Making and cooking, no way. Sylvan Lake was where I first met my husband Mike. I was 14 and he was, you know, going on 16, so. I just looked across the camp road there and said, oh, who's that? And I gotta go over there and check her out. And He was a skinny little kid. <laughs> she was beautiful. You know, of course it was the 80s with big hair and we're playing hide and seek, we're playing flashlight tag and whatever else was going on. I was still young. We dated for a few weeks. He lived in Fishkill and I grew up in Chelsea. And then, uh, that was about it. So um, we did not connect um, again until I was 17. She would know what I was doing only through the family through because my cousin Aaron ended up marrying her brother. I was working at the Book and Record in the mall. And, and I went up to Book and Record store in the South Hills Mall to see another friend. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen him in a long time. He looks really good. <laughs> I didn't know she worked there. And um, I invited both Mike and Steve over to our graduation party. At 19, somebody says, party, yes, you'll go. She, I think, was actually dating a guy. I was actually dating another guy at the time, but for some reason couldn't wait for him to get there. <laughs> yeah, and then the other guy ended up going up the street to the other graduation party. From July 5th, 1986, we've been dating ever since. So we got married in 1991. And uh, now we've been married, what, 27 years? 27, right? Yeah, 27 years. Always got to hang out with my cousins before I even started my work career at Delano's. They uh, probably started hanging out there when I was about, I'd say eight, nine years old, sleep over my cousin's house and go hang out. and we go down to the restaurant on a Friday night or Saturday night, eat pizza, play pinball, play the jukebox. The grandmothers would all cook and uh, sell their recipes and sell their, their entrees. And Uncle Tony used to sell buckets of spaghetti out the back door for X amount of dollars, five dollars, whatever it was back in the day. Everybody came through the back door to say hello. And all night long, people would stop by. It was a Friday night. They'd always come through and jump in the back and say hello and busy. Or they come through the bar area and through the kitchen and say hello. And Tuesdays, my aunt would go down and make meatballs, and that was meatball day. So she'd roll meatballs with my cousin's grandmother, which Grandma Rosie, everybody called her Graham. She'd be there at 7 o'clock in the morning till 4, 4.30 at night when my cousin, my other cousin would come in and then she'd go home, but seven days a week. From 1959, I think it was, to the day she passed. Uh, I don't know what year she passed, 99 maybe, somewhere in there. They shut the restaurant at, night, at 2000. My dad's parents were tall, my mom's parents were short. My dad's parents, by my brother and I, were called Big Graham and Big Pops, 
and my mom's parents were were deemed little grandma and little pops. And my grandfather was literally five foot four, and my grandmother was four foot ten. And so he was the patriarch of the family. He was this kind, gentle soul, and they never needed anything. They they wanted for nothing. It was all about family. It was all about family and food. She would cook uh, every Sunday, the entire family, aunts and uncles. And you'd walk into the smell of the meatballs cooking and frying and just the sauce and the gravy being made. And it was a family of hunters. So there was, you know, every kind of game imaginable in the, the Sunday gravy. And so um, everybody would just, you know, kind of just sit and break bread at the table and have pasta and gravy and game and meatballs and bread. and. It would be like card game afterwards and just having, yeah, just a great Sunday day at, at uh, Little Graham and Little Pops. A special kind of person to do this every day. That's why I think when you get a bad review or somebody wants to say something bad on the internet about your work, take it personal because they can't walk, walk a day in your shoes and put the hours in. In 11th grade I didn't do so good so I think I only passed a half a class a half year of cinema class in English failed all the rest because I was too busy working or hanging out with my friends and just didn't like doing homework. So I knew I needed to do something. So I decided at 17 to join the Army Reserve and I did my basic training in between 11th and 12th grade that summer. And uh, that gave me the discipline I needed to finish and get my high school diploma. But I stayed in the reserves. It was really good. I really liked it. Um, I know in 91 when I was getting married, that's when they started the first conflict, Desert Storm. And uh, we had a couple guys volunteer. Uh, a lot of talk. We weren't sure what was going to happen. But thank the Lord that it was over before it really started. And we didn't have to get deployed. And I continued to get married that year. I went in in 84 and got out at 95. He was in the Army Reserves. He would go two weeks a year. Um, he also was started a seal coating company, um, Dutch's Blacktop Seal Coating. Striping and plowing and doing whatever we have to do. The business went full time. We moved from, let's say, 1,500 square foot garage to 3,500 square feet to an 18,000 square foot warehouse. I got introduced to a guy from Naperville, Illinois that was looking to grow his snow company. You know, seemed quite reputable at the time and we did our due diligence and looked into him. We had an offer to buy the company. Uh, we decided to take it and then we moved out here uh, to Naperville to become his VP of Business Development. Moving out here was definitely a change. Um, everyone's super nice. The East Coast, everybody's very busy and they're just kind of, you know, it's like hop to it, kind of get out of my way type, I'm going, but, you know, I'm going to be nice about it in the same manner. <laughs> Autumn was going into first grade, so she'd be six, Preston was nine, and Austin was 12. We knew within eight months of moving our family out here that um, the the buyer of the company was basically going to run the company into the ground. And we were just looking at each other going, what are we going to do? We need to jump ship. We need to try to recoup as much as we can. He filed bankruptcy and we never got paid. It was really, really scary at the time. And it's to the point where you just don't know like how you're going to feed your kids. What are you going to do to take care of your children? Our kids didn't even know, you know, when you have to file for bankruptcy and you don't have uh, a lot of money in your bank account and uh, for food. And then somebody gives you a $150 Walmart card and that is like gold. I applied for state help 
food stamps, medical insurance, whatever we could do to get ourselves to the next step, you know, whatever it took. Even Vicki picked up a school bus driving job part-time uh, to make make it through. I was still home taking care of the kids. Um, I just, uh, we didn't know what to do. Jumped on a couple other companies to work with and just try to make a go of it and try to survive here in the Midwest. Deciding to stay, even though we didn't really have a career, our kids had kind of settled in. Um, they're young, you know, mind you, they're six, nine, and 12. They've now started their schools. They're all in their schools. They're all making friends. The last company I worked for was an East Coast company. I was a Midwest manager, managing landscaping and snow for big box stores. They decided to lay me off uh, March 12th, 2014, uh, because they wanted to hire another guy from a leather company, whatever the deal was. And again, we've been through this before, so here we go, laid off again. I said, we're done. I'm so done with this industry. What are we going to do? My wife said, like, what are we going to do? I said, well, I had a little fit with God and my our little argument. and I don't want to do snow anymore. I don't want to do landscaping. I don't even want to do this business. I don't know what you have for me, but I don't want to do this. Spring break was the next week that he got laid off. My mom called me up and said, look, why don't you bring the kids down to spring break to Florida? They go down for the winter to Melbourne Beach. I'll pay for the gas. We called Mike's parents. I said, we want to come. They paid for our gas money to get to Florida. We hopped in the car on Thursday and got down to Florida on Friday. That ride there, you know, was, was a long ride. It always is. And uh, I remember saying to Mike, gosh, why didn't you stop for food on the highway before we get on this long one? Because there's nothing here. And why didn't you just stop and get some Cheetos or something? Because I'm starving. And he's like, no, you have to wait for the pizza. I'm like, I don't want to wait for the pizza. I'm crabby. I'm tired. And, and you can ask Mike if I'm hungry and I'm tired. I'm cranky. Cranky. Just feed me. And I just told her, I said, look, you've been sleeping for the last, I don't know how many hours, but I've been talking to my mom. We're going to meet at Bizarro's Pizza, and she's gonna, they're going to have it all ready. Mike's parents were at Bizarro's in Florida, in Melbourne Beach, and they had the pizza ready and waiting when we got there. And I was, like, so excited to eat the pizza. I hadn't had New York pizza in two years. I remember just biting into the pizza going, oh, my gosh, why are we not bringing this to Neighborville if... We are wanting it. There's probably a lot of East Coast people out there that are going to want New York pizza. And why are we not doing this? Vicky's like, well, why can't we bring this to Naperville? I'm like, well, we don't have any money. We don't have a job. You know, just some of the obvious things. And so that night, literally, I'm in the, you know, in the trailer talking to Mike's parents. He's laying on the bed on the porch, Googling up pizza places for sale in Naperville. Why? I don't know. I just put in pizzeria in for sale and this little pizzeria on Whirly Road popped up. I looked at it and I looking at the numbers and everything was there. It showed a cooler and a ovens and a dough, you know, a, a dough machine and uh, I'm like, I don't know what more you need. We literally called the guy that night and said, we're interested. Um, please just hold it until we come back. He said he had some interest. We jumped in, you know, I don't say head first. We jumped in feet first because we had no idea what we're doing.
thing. Do you want to uh, make this the oregano shaker? You could try it. See what happens. So you want to pour balls on the top? I don't know any other way to get it out. <laughs> well, you, that's, that's good. You guys got little hands. My big fat hand ain't going to get in there. <laughs> the oregano pizza? Yeah, I like that old pizza. In New York, you say the more oregano, the better. Five yeah, we got three in so far. Okay. This is number four. Uh, it feels good to bring a little slice of New York here uh, because, I mean, I feel like a lot of pizza here is the same. It's a lot of like either a deep dish, a lot of like the thin crust. I honestly did not know that you couldn't get New York pizza in Chicago. I didn't know you couldn't get it I thought you could get it everywhere. And so we went for pizza with the kids, and I think, I'm trying to think, our, our kids were six, nine, and 12. And they cut it in squares, and I looked at Mike and I said, did they cut it like this for the kids? Why is it in squares? I really thought, I said, are they looking at us from the kitchen, and they cut it in squares for our kids? I had no clue. I feel like New York's got very good tastes with their sauces and everything, so, I mean, there's a lot of New Yorkers here in Naperville, and uh, they love like what we brought from New York, and uh, I don't know, I'm happy for it, you know that we can bring something from home to a whole different state and make a big thing. Yep. Who's this order for? Police. They're making that, you know, the challenge, the police challenge. Yep. Yeah. They asked me if I could be in the video. They said no. Mm -hmm. Unless I get arrested. order that they just made is going to uh, the police department they're doing that challenge video or something that they go on Facebook and uh, each department challenges another department so they're in production starting production today so uh, I uh, offered volunteered uh, some pizzas and they took it up on us so uh, we do a lot with them. Hey, Erwin. Yeah. It was five pizzas in total. One cheese, one pepperoni, one sausage, one half and half. One everything. Thinking. Five 18 cheese, one 18 pepperoni, one sausage, one sandwich, yeah. one half pepperoni. Uh, Vicky, yeah. Oh, there, there's explains why. What's it say? Five had no clue what we were doing in this business. Steven, my nephew, um, started slinging pieces when he was 14 back in the East Coast. And then he ended up opening Little Pops after my grandfather, uh, who was five foot four. That's why he's named Little Pops. Um, and uh, my brother, years later, ended up going into business with him. So my brother, Lewis and Steven now run Little Pops in Maybrook. In my mind, it was sort of not like a franchise, but they're going to give us the playbook and they're going to tell us what to do and how to do it. And we're just going to mimic what they're doing in New York here in Illinois. So the recipes, Mike's grandmother that he was learning from in the, in the restaurant all those years, my grandmother, the, the, the gravy recipe, the meatballs, um, the achina de pepe soup was my grandmother's recipe. And um, we used to make it more like a stew, a little thicker stew. So now we have it as a soup. My brother and my nephew um, had recipes from their restaurant. The pizza recipe came from, you know, straight from New York, from my nephew and my brother. Um, we knew we had a great recipe to bring back here and it was a true authentic New York recipe. It was Vicki and I on the kitchen side. The pizza side was pretty decent because we hired Irwin who knew pizza. He went back to New York with Irwin, our pizza maker, who was originally from Staten, Staten Island, New York, lived in Kenosha. We found him like, what? I mean, a couple weeks before we were about to open, we found Irwin. Got on Craigslist and I saw all these uh, on this ad and uh, clicked on it 
like uh, Mike was uh, asking if he was looking for a pizza man, and uh, I sent him an email. He sent me an email back. We got on the phone the day after, and uh, we spoke for like two hours. He's from New York, from New York, so I like, kind of clicked. Uh, then I came down here in Aprilville and met him and his wife, and they were awesome people. Um, then after that, I told him, like, let's do it, let's make it happen. You know, it was it was a new journey for me. We, we made a trip to New York and uh, to this other little pops to get to see how everything works. What are we gonna bring back? And we spent a whole week there. I actually worked a day there. So it was basically two days before we were to open. Mike called me from New York after after being in my brother's restaurant with my brother and my nephew in their restaurant, it's the, both their restaurant. Um, he called me and says, we can't do this. And I said, what? I said, well, you need to figure it out because we're opening in two days. Like, y you have to figure it out. We have to figure it out. There, there's no turning back at this point. We had videos, we had a lot of pictures. How did this work? How did this get played it? So we tried to mimic everything they were doing. Uh, we were gonna open on a Monday. Um, our pizza maker's car broke down on the way back and they did not get back until we made our first pizza the night before we opened, actually the same day we opened. It was actually 2 a.m. in the morning of the day we were opening. The first pizza was made in the oven with the true ingredients that we were to make a New York pizza with. And I remember eating it at 2 o'clock in the morning just looking out the front window of the pizzeria going, this is so surreal, having New York pizza in Chicago. It was so surreal. And we were tired and we didn't care because it was like so exciting that we were having New York pizza here. We didn't advertise. We just turned on the open sign. I didn't put any flags by the road for two weeks. Friends of friends came and people came in and just we gave samples of garlic knots to all the children and uh, here's New York pizza and they got to take some slices and took a menu and... The first week was just all pizza. Everybody wanted to try the pizza and we had one pizza maker. One pizza maker that knew how to do everything with dough. So that means pizza, calzones, rolls, zeppelis, um, fried dough. Nobody wanted kitchen food because that was not the fun thing. Like everybody is like, what is New York pizza? We have to try it. I think we did maybe 500, $550 that day, which we were excited because my goal and thought process was if we sold uh, 30 pizzas at $20 a pizza a day, $600 a day, we could pay the rent and make a, make a living out of it. The response was crazy. So many East Coasters coming and finding out that we had New York pizza. Um, just, just people talking about, you know, our friends opened a restaurant and our church coming to support us. And the phone kept ringing and the phone kept ringing. And I, I think we, that first Friday night, it seemed like we were so busy, and I think we did $800 that first Friday night. But we were so busy because it was just like the three of us back there. And I said to Erwin, just just teach me, teach me how to make knots, how to, teach me how to do this, teach me how to make the Zeppelis. I'll just do it, I'll make it, you know, we'll learn. So you just have to learn, you just, that's your crash course right there. And I remember him saying, you know, he could hear the phone ring and he's like, oh my gosh, it keeps ringing. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, okay, increase the time. We honestly didn't know what we were doing. Erwin, yes. I need a block of butter when you get a chance. These are the Alta Cachinas. They are the most sweetest, delicious tomatoes. So again, it's the secret, the backbone of our vodka sauce. A lot of people like a smooth vodka sauce. I like mine. A little bit of chunks of tomato and old school. 
I don't. I got you. Got to make the little puppies vodka sauce. Vodka sauce is heavy cream, marinara, and vodka. I don't know who invented it, but it works. Now we add some fresh basil, some spices, salt, pepper, a little garlic. We use those Alta Cucina tomatoes, which give it a little texture, uh, add a little sweetness to it. And of course, the, the heavy cream here. And then cheese. Forgot the most important, parm cheese goes in. Where it came from, I have no clue, but man, it is delicious and we sell a lot. The biggest seller with the vodka sauce is the stuffed in yokis it's like a little little in yokis stuffed with regat season regatta cheese in a pasta filling and so delicious like little pillows of heaven is what everybody calls it here's a little mascarpone Thank you again. All right. Italia. Nice. I look a little too big in that ride, but it looks about the same size. I might have to get one. I have a delivery to the police department. You know that. Did you forget? Question mark. I look forward to coming in. Um, I don't always want to come in right at 10 or 10.30 because I'm not the morning person. I'd rather come in at 12. <laughs> Madonna Mia, I gotta get banker's hours like her. I told her be here on time, okay. I don't know her idea on time is 11.30. Now what? Uh... Hello. Hey, you forgot a bag of pizzas. Come on, mud on. He said two bags. Yep. No, there was three. Remember we sent them all? Okay, well meet me out. Meet me out back. Just uh, throw it in the back here. I thought it was pretty cute and stuff. I only saw the two bags there. I told you three. Yeah, I know. You're like my wife. You tell me tree. Uh, but you didn't put, put it on the. Hey, listen, I'm fat. <laughs> Come on, man. I said a little bit. There you okay, go. Okay, I just lost. A I just lost weight. <laughs> All right, my friends, make All sure right. Vicky takes that beef out. All right. What now was she calling me about? What? Wasn't there two orders? I told you I can't text and drive. No, he changed it to one. Well, everybody's jumping on social media 
uh, and leaving or being a critic these days. We're human. We're going to make mistakes. Um, that's, you know, but tell us so we get a chance to correct this. We had one customer go home and, you know, or ate everything, told, every, told us it was fine, and then went home and wrote a complaint that it was terrible, it was no flavor, no taste, and I'm thinking, that can't be because you just ate everything on your plate. We walked the dining room, we talked to our customers, we, we know the real people, what they're telling us uh, and how it's tasting. You know, we, we enjoy our food. Uh, and so does a bunch of other people. Her call has been forwarded to an office. Uh, see, when she's busy, she ain't got no time to be talking to me. Oh, yeah, when I'm busy, she's calling me all the time. Ooh, where are you? What are you doing? Go 10 minutes down the road. Uh, Hello. I thought you were already there. That pizza was ready at 11.05. How fast do you think anyway. I can go? I can't speed just because I'm going to the police I department. I thought you were already there and back. <laughs> no. Okay, what do you need? Hold on, oh, that's pretty. It. Man, that's really pretty. I'm going to move uh, down to Naperville. Right now. Hold on. Okay. I didn't say anything. I can't even hear you. What do you mean you can't hear me? I'm talking. Okay. Are you doing the vodka sauce? You want me to finish it when I get there? Oh, I can do it. What, did, did you start it? I didn't even look on the stove yet. What do you mean you didn't I'll look in the it. stove? Where you been? No, I didn't. I, I went to the back, got the beef, and then I got on the phone. <laughs> Okay. Sayonara. Ciao. Delivering it to my parents since they're not paying for it. I gotta make sure it's good. Want to try one, Autumn? That's my daughter, Autumn. Yeah, she ain't paying either. All right. Oh, yeah. Who are you talking to? Oh, who's gonna Myself. I do that a lot. Mike is a talker. He's so funny, though. The only time he doesn't talk is when he's sleeping. <laughs> he's having a garlic and oil pasta? I don't know. That's not on his diet plan. Wait till I tell my sister. Here. I put a little extra garlic. This way my mom stay away from him today. Your father's going to be full. Ain't no way you're going to be able to eat all this. Who's waiting on him? Oh, God bless you. With all the old people staying in my house, I feel like I'm at the nursing home. There's more, there's more drugs out there and they're all taken in the morning. Hey, here's my flashlight. I've been looking for this. Maybe it's not mine. It is now. I better put it over here. No, I do. I'm going to make a shaker out of it for oregano for the pizza guys. You poke holes in the top. It's going to be a big shaker. Yeah, well, well this way they don't... Do that on the line like this? Yeah, I got that idea from another pizzeria. Come on, here you go. This is your garlic now. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, zip it. Why are you calling me in the car <laughs> when I'm driving? And you know it's illegal. Because you just had pulled out of the okay, parking but spot. But the, the car was in forward motion, correct? Yes. Okay, so why are you going to get me in trouble? Because you hadn't pulled out of the parking lot yet. If so, I'm still driving. Not if you're stopped at the edge. So I should stop at the stop sign and have a whole conversation. Well, that's why I said then call me. Call me. Well, what was the big deal? You were talking about an ice cream man. Yes. Oh, that's creepy. What does that have to do with anything? No, oh, Allie said an ice cream man, creepy man, was driving around her neighborhood with the music really loud at 8.30 at night in the dark. Trying to get customers. <laughs> he was it trying to get dark customers. At What's it was heard? dark. I said you should report it. It's creepy. What kind of ice cream you have then? I I don't care. I'll follow Allie anybody. said she watched him out the window. I'll go I'll go with an empty van. You got candy? Show me the candy first. No, he's probably waiting for the kids that are home alone without their parents. Oh, trying to stop. scoop them up. That's scary. It's you wouldn't go buy ice cream at 8.30 at night from an ice cream man. They're funny. <laughs> they're, I love them both so much. They're fun to work with. It's honestly weird when they're not here. And I miss them when they're not here. But they just joke around, have a good time. But then they still care. They make sure everything gets done. And it's a lot of fun. All right. It's not bad for me. Would you like a bag for that? Okay. So I've known them ever since they moved from New York. They really felt that it was a calling for them to do this and that they could, that this is where God wanted them to be and that they could make a difference in the lives of the employees as well as the lives of the people who came, you know, the, the customers. There was a customer of ours. And she gave us a Thanksgiving card. And in that card, it was a long, she wrote a lot of stuff in there. But one of the things that she said that has always stuck with me is that she goes, when I'm feeling down, I know that all I have to do is come to your restaurant and I'll feel better. We had no idea that, that we were having that impact with her. And she's come in when, when things have gone around, give, we've given her hugs, and it's just, it's really neat to be able to see the impact that you have. This is pink peppercorn sauce. It might not be pink enough for Vicky's liking. Kevin, tell me what you think of this. It really hurts. My leg is really hurting. It's Go sit down. Stinks. I'm going to do it with shrimp. I'm doing it with seafood. I'm shrimp doing it with Doing everything. All seafood. kinds of chunks of seafood. Very subtle. No, just the shrimp. Premium. Why don't you do the shrimp? A little bit of a little bit of heat. Yeah, well, do, you, do you taste the leaf? Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, I knew there was, but kind of almost like potato Do you really have leeks in there? Do you? Yeah, kinda I got like leeks. That, that potato y kind of. Thank you. Yep. I don't know. Uh, that was not the sauce I intended, but it's good. We're building flavors and layers. I can baby. tell. Layers. I can tell. It's all over. It's, me. Like, a, oh, it's like an onion. It's got it's Thank got you. <laughs> it's got a, it's like him, he's got layers. <laughs> Shut up, all you. I got a bloom, how about that? I'm the blooming onion. Lookers have layers. You know? Everybody's a comedian, Ogres Kevin. Ogres have layers, that was good. Get back, Kevin. Zip it. Ogres, I love it. I got your ogre. When we first opened, we only had, like I said, it was a carry out, take out. We had three, four little tables out front. And Friday nights would be packed because they just wanted to have New York style pizza right out of the oven and enjoy that New York experience. And the joke became, when are you going to knock a hole in the wall? We want a restaurant. I talked her into letting me go talk to the city. 
because I had this harebrained idea that we can get five thousand dollars or we could scrummage that together and and knock a hole in the wall and just throw some paint in here and some tables well the city of Naperville said no I need to add a bathroom on and and all that and that was going to cost another fifteen or twenty thousand dollars total I said we're not going to be able to do it so I think it was sometime around Christmas or after Christmas January family from church stepped up and said look we believe in you so much we want to lend you the fifteen thousand dollars to open the restaurant and we went back and forth and said no 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 you don't do that uh, it's still our first year. No, 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 you have to take the blessing so we can get the blessing. I said, oh, okay, let's talk about it. I was the only pizza maker on Monday, so we should, decided to shut the restaurant down on Mondays so I can come over here and do all the work. June 1st came and went. Uh, I continued to work on it. July 1st came and went, and we got it done like August 2nd, we opened the room. kind of surreal to really come here work with my family whereas I can't even think of if I had to go get another job somewhere else and then have to deal with some other boss that you know wasn't my family. Working with my family is very interesting to say the least. You get the best of times and you kind of get the worst of times you know you can go at each other's throats then at the same time you have to end the day and know you're still family you know. It's pretty good, you get a lot of free food. Friends want to ask you for food. It's like my second home. It's not really like I'm coming to work. I never really wanted anything to do with it at first, you know, and then went through a period of time where, you know, for the first two years, I uh, basically only did this. I didn't go to college. I decided I was gonna stay in the family business and, you know, and try and do whatever I could do. and. It's just been a huge change, like, in the house, too, because they're not home as much. And we kind of all adapted to it pretty quickly. I, I would definitely say it brings us a lot closer together. I used to work, like, every Saturday, and then summer came along. I kind of dodged it a little bit because I wanted to hang out with my friends and softball. I had softball every single weekend, so I didn't have a chance to work. My mom, I would have to say, is... She's a very nice person, sometimes too nice. You know, they put their heart and soul in it, into everything that's going on here. Um, you know, into making the food, into making sure customers are taken care of, into everything. Um, just very loving and caring people. My dad is probably, probably the hardest person, hardest working person that I know. He's always done everything he could to make ends meet, you know, and, and even when we didn't have a dime in the checking account, you know, he never let any of us know it as kids, you know. He's usually rushing home from the restaurant. We're definitely always late to everything we go to. Just being able to offer something that you can't get anywhere else around here. You know, you want to hop on a plane and, you know, or take the 800 mile drive. That's cool, but, you know, when, when customers walk through the door and they know that they don't have to do that, it's just the coolest thing in the world. When, when you look out into the dining room and you see a dining room full of people enjoying, you know, your, your family's food and it's just kind of, it, it's really surreal, like, it's kind of hard to believe, like, we're actually doing this. Order for Patrick? Yes. 
sir. Big Z again. I got vodka. Garrett, you want these two delicious dinners? Are you going to be okay? Don't burn yourself. Don't eat them along the way. Tell them caution, it might be delicious. How's your, how's your meatball? Yeah. That's funny. What's your name? Scarlet. Scarlet? Beautiful. Hi. Hi. I'm trying to lose a little weight. I got a pacemaker and I have a defibrillator. So the idea is to strengthen it and get it pumping up to snuff. But if anything happens, it will shock me too. All right, I want some pizza now. I'm up. You woke me up. I want some pizza. Oh. You can't have pizza? No? Not yet? Well, I think so. Ah, no big deal. You gotta start them young. Did they give you pizza when you were younger? No? <laughs> Cynthia needs me. Now I gotta go to work. All right, thank you. Hey, I got the number one and two dishwashers in the whole county right here working. The number one and two dishwashers back there. Look at them. Yeah. This is, a this is what you do when the dishwasher doesn't show up. And thank God that Caesar came in to help. I've been here more times than I want to. <laughs> Look at this, we're in this month's PMQ Pizza Magazine, Little Pops, back in May, May, June, we entered the Midwest Pizza Contest, my two guys, and here we are. That's my two pizza makers, Russo and Irwin, and out of 22 pizziolas across the country, we came in tied for fourth, had all of them in here somewhere, they were from all over. There we are. So, had it right down here at the uh, North American Pizza and Culinary Academy in Lyle. An amazing day with meeting a great bunch of friends. So, all right. We made the magazine. Little Pops Pizzeria. father would be very humbled to know that there's two restaurants named after his namesake. When her uncle, Little Pop's son, showed up and saw his picture, um, I think that was a moment. It was really a moment to see that, wow, Little Pop's continues to live on. And uh, we're taking the family traditions, the recipes, the memories, and we're just passing them along through our food and through our customers. And it's like you're coming into our house and eating at our kitchen table here at Little Pops. We snap at each other sometimes. 
half the time. Well, more than half the time. But we get along. We just, we know each other so well after all these years together <laughs> that I can tell if he's getting tired, I'll be like, okay, take a step out. Or he can tell when I'm tired and he can take over. I, I guess yeah, I measure success if I'm paying the bills. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to have a great customer base. It's still humbling to think that you're creating food and making food that people want to come back and get on a weekly basis. It kind of feels like a field of pizza dreams. Build it and they will come. Um, you know, with that, you have to put in the hard work behind it. You can build it, and, but then you have to man the ship um, because they will come. And when they come, nobody told us how much work this actually is. Um, but again, we're used to hard work. There's so much love and so much time that we've put into this that every second of every day counts. Oh, so love me, oh. Look, my wife trying to, you know I can't text and drive, right? I gotta remember what I'm making here. This is the problem. It's illegal to talk, text while I'm driving. Can't take this anymore. Well, at least we'll have proof for the insurance company. Yep. Here, here you go. <laughs> Let me I gotta sit in the pool for a while. It's <laughs> freaking hot out there. Daddy's dying. Brother, does this feel good? <laughs> 